Lieutenant General Jenny Cagnan named Canada's newest Chief of the Defense Staff, and the relaxed rules on grooming are being scaled back. This is the Grey White North Report. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Well, I called it. I knew two, three years ago that Trudeau was going to get a woman in the top defense post. There had been a huge witch hunt back in 2021 where a lot of the most male senior military members had been pushed out or forced to retire simply because of sexual misconduct. Some of which may have been justified, some of it was not. There were some pretty uh, weak cases there. But they were all forced out. And Trudeau, in his quest to be as inclusive as possible, has decided to give the, the job to a woman. She was being groomed, I think, from, from a long time. But I gotta give credit, she has been in the military for quite a while. She has been in the military since 1986. She helped as part of a combat engineer unit. She helped with the flooding in Quebec in 2008. She had seen service in Bosnia. Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan. So she has been in some pretty hot spots. I believe she was the first woman to uh, to lead a combat unit into war and was Canada's chief chief military leader during one NATO mission. So she does have some credentials to her. And I know that she was brought in and she is currently the military's chief of professional conduct and culture, a position created by the following sexual misconduct crisis so obviously she's helped to push some of those guys out the door she eliminated a lot of her rivals and the way was clear now does sexual mistreatment happen in the military all the time but what do you expect when you're in a culture that's mostly male dominated women have to either take it or fight back waiting 20 years to fight back is not a good reason some women also use their sex to to get preferential treatment or to get enhance their further their careers and when it doesn't work they get all pissed off so it's not it's not just a one-way street it takes two to tango sometimes karen and i know i'm butchering that last name sorry she's been the face of the efforts to reform the culture providing updates to the public about efforts to implement those recommendations really don't remember seeing her too often basically she's trying they were trying to promote a woke culture and i think it failed as recruitment is way down. Now, she has received the Meritorious Service Medal and the Governor General's Order of Military Merit, which is not the same thing as getting like a Victoria Cross or anything like that. So, not sure how much actual fighting she's seen. As opposed to, it's one thing to lead a mission and to lead a combat force in the Canadian military. It's another thing to actually get shot at. So, I don't know, because I know I had an ex-girlfriend who went to Bosnia and Afghanistan and she was just a supply clerk. She never actually fired her gun in anger. Now, Justine, opening up his mouth, called it an extraordinary important choice. Not really, it was the only choice. You'd made up your mind years ago to get a woman in the top spot. My cousin in the military, she told me that three years ago. They're, they were looking to get a woman there. It was, not, it was no big secret. It was part of the woke liberal agenda. I hope this lady does well. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, Trudeau goes on to say, particularly these complicated geopolitics and increased threats, particularly to our Arctic. Well, speeding up production of our Navy would have, would have helped. And they want to make sure we have the right person to lead our armed forces in this pivotal time. Was something I think Canadians appropriately felt that we needed to take seriously, which we did. First of all, you need a warrior. In these times, with, with China being the assholes they've always been, the Russians reverting back to their Stalinistic ways, with Putin's war in Ukraine, with what's going on in the Middle East with Hamas and Hezbollah, which we are now seeing in our streets, support, those kind of supporters. Yeah, I would think we need someone tough. So hopefully she's tough. So she's taken over a military in transition, one that's been depleted, and morale is low because of the witch hunt, and short roughly 16,000 troops, according to F Defense Minister Bill Blair. Well, limited conscription will help that as well making it, making it mandatory for high school students to serve two to three years in the military will relieve some of that pressure. Conscription, conscript so many students at a high school. Stick and carrot approach. Have bonuses up, up the pay scale, create bonuses and more benefits like a full-time benefits, including housing, free housing for military members while they serve. 
that would be great. Those are things that can be done to up recruitment. I also think that our procurement policy should be overhauled and cut out most of the bureaucracy and red tape, make things faster to get, because everything in our military needs to be replaced. And remember, our Navy is so old right now, and we have yet to replace our frigates, and we've yet to cut steel on the new frigates. That's not going to happen for another couple of years. Is she the right person for the job? Well, she's definitely the right person for the woke culture. I'll give her that. Maybe they're hoping to get more women to join the Canadian military. Who knows? So the Armed Forces faces increased demands to respond to weather-related emergencies in Canada and boost the country's presence in Eastern Europe as war rages in Ukraine. Exactly. But we should also be looking to our Pacific and Arctic as well. We cannot defend ourselves and we, we lack the tools and political stability to do so. Canada could have lots of wonderful toys to defend our country and project power abroad, but we refuse to put money into it. Instead, we put money into useless programs, all in the name of diversity and inclusiveness. So General Wayne Airy, he steps down after only three years because his predecessor has stepped down after being accused of sexual misconduct, witch hunt. So he stabilized the organization amid the scandal was the top priority. And it's not been finished, so Lieutenant General Kerrigan is set to officially take command of the Armed Forces in a ceremony on July 18th. Well, I hope her well. I don't wish her any any harm or any bad. I hope she does really well and turns things around quickly. Whether she can or not, it's another story. Being the head of the defense, chief of defense staff means she has to do, do a politics. And in that case, she might be pretty good for the job. Which goes on the next thing. A large proportion of military dislike relaxed rules on personal grooming survey fines. I know I have cousins in the military. They hated it. Outgoing commander admits the changes made some CAF members profoundly uncomfortable. In fact, I, f I found it, may it would make our military profoundly unprofessional. When you're at home, on home soil, or at a military base in somewhere far away, like in a safe zone, look presentable. You're representing your country. Look presentable. Like you're on the parade. In a combat zone, I couldn't care less how scruffy you get, simply because it's not important. When you're on the base and you're just training, it, to, make, to look good is important. It projects that the military is a good place to be. So they, they let the personal grooming habits slip, so they allowed you to grow your hair as long as you wanted, your mustaches and beards as long as you wanted. You could have tattoos and earrings and like rings all over you. Body piercings didn't matter. Now, as far as piercings go, on the parade ground, who cares if you have a you have a nose ring or a lip ring? But in combat, you got to take those off because the metal shines. Or when you're in the field during training exercises, get rid of it. So they're going back to what it used to be: keeping your beards 2.5 centimeters in length and bulk, and hair for both men and women must be tied back and away from the face and off the collar. I think they relax these rules to try and get more ethnic minorities, like uh, especially uh, Muslims and Sikhs, to join, because they tend to let their beards grow wild. But I think that's been a failure. You know, people don't, most citizens don't want to see some some guy who looks like he came in off the streets in the military. Homeless people, they want to see professionally groomed, well kept, disciplined soldiers. So everything was linked to lower confidence in leadership. Well, of course, but the witch hunt, why wouldn't there be low confidence? So with the witch hunt that, that decimated the top echelon of the Canadian military, why wouldn't there be lower confidence? The army has no confidence in the political leadership, and it trickles down. So this survey went into everything. A lot of complaints came from non-commissioned members, those responsible for the day-to-day -day enforcement rules. But a larger proportion of members who identify with minority sexual orientation said the changes were beneficial and made them proud to serve. Again, being in the military shouldn't be about your sexual orientation or your grooming. I, for one, would rather see the old rules back. You should look presentable. If you're serving the Army for, for whatever number of years, you should look presentable. I'm pretty sure that your the minority sexual orientation can, can give a little and go... Nicely groomed for the next th three to five years while they serve. This isn't a pride parade. This is a military parade. In the survey, it says 68% of them. Well, how many of the actually, how, what's the percentage that actually are in the military compared to, compared to the others? However, 
all you Canadians out there, let me know what you think of Canada's newest chief of defense staff. Did you see this coming like I did? And do you think that it's a positive thing for our Canadian military? Also, any ex-military person, people, I'd like to hear what you think of the uh, grooming rules. Be nice to hear from. And leave comments in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And until next time, this has been the Great White North Report.